The idea is the planter and tractor will drive themselves completely around the field and complete the field without us ever having to touch the steering wheel. Welcome back to High Tech Farmer. My name is Matthias. It is 2024 and it's time for us to install some GPS equipment onto our Polaris Ranger. Before we jump into it and get all the hardware installed into the Ranger, I thought I'd take a second to describe and help you guys understand as to why I'm going through the effort of adding GPS to our Ranger. And the best way that I can describe what I'm trying to do here with the side-by-side -side is relate it back to something everybody's familiar with, and that being Apple or Google Maps. So when you're in your truck or your car trying to drive to a big city and you plug in the directions, and it shows you the street view and a map view of everything around, well, here at the farm, we don't have the glory of a Google car that can drive through the field to show us where the tractor needs to be next season. But by me installing GPS on our side-by-side, -side, I can then send those GPS lines or directions to our planter tractor, our combine, our sprayer. That way it'll make us more efficient. The greatest efficiency gain my farm is going to see by installing this GPS equipment and going out and mapping all of our farms here in the middle of January is drain planting season. Because in previous years, drain planting, when we're going around the headlands or the outermost pass of the field, we're manually steering the tractor and planter. But now by me going out with the GPS equipment here and mapping all of our fields, we will have auto track or GPS that will steer the tractor and planter perfectly where I drive. Now that I have all the hardware I need on the Ranger, there is one vitally important thing that I can't forget to do and I have done before, and that is take a measurement from the GPS globe to the ground, from the GPS globe to the end of the chain. That way when we switch our GPS lines over to any of our other tractors that have GPS, sorry 560 you don't have GPS, but when we do switch the lines over, that way everything will match up. So now I gotta take some measurements, get everything plugged into the display, so we're ready to start mapping. And the globe to the ground we're gonna say is 84 inches. That one was, the height was seven feet. The last thing we gotta measure is something here on the planter, and that is the distance between our last row of the corn planter and this bracket right here for our marker. That way I can adjust that chain on the pole, which will be the length of our marker bracket. So when we're going around fence posts or telephone poles, we make sure that we account for this bracket so when the planter comes around next spring, there's no problems with this bumping into anything that it shouldn't. And the measurement that I find here from our center of our last hopper to this bracket is 30 inches. The chain I got hanging here, this is just for me riding in the Ranger, but this is to show where the outside of that planter bracket is actually going to be resting. So as long as this doesn't hit anything while we go around the fields, we know the planter won't hit anything this spring. We should be ready to go now. We have all the measurements taken, the chain hung. Our first row of corn lines up perfectly with the center of the steering wheel. So when there isn't a boundary or isn't an obstacle on the outside of the field, I'll get a little bit closer to those field edges. Let's hop on in and start mapping some fields. I just got the Ranger and everything out to our first field we're gonna start mapping at. And this is a perfect prime example as to why I wanted to do this, get this job done. So this field right here, we own. This field right here, our neighbor farms and owns. And as you can tell, there's no fence line separating the two fields, but I know there's a surveying pin or a geo reference pin right there in the middle of the road that says everything to the north is ours, everything to the south is theirs. So by lining up my GPS globe directly over that pin, then driving clear to the other end of the field where I know there's a fence post, which is another surveying pin between the two, I'll have a perfectly straight line. And then rather than having to come into here next spring and just seeing black dirt over there and black dirt over there, over on our side with the planter, I just hit GPS, auto steer, and boom! It's gonna drive the planter perfectly only on our side of the field. There is the other surveying pin. And now coming back to the display, I should be able to hit resume and it should snap a line from that road. Pause that. So that was the road we started up at. Now we're down here at this fence line. Now I'm making my GPS line here across this fence line and you can really see and help understand why I'm using this post. So this is the outside of the planter next spring. 
So as long as that chain and that post don't hit any of these other parts of the fence line, I know that the planter won't, and then my row will be as close as possible to the fence. I just finished up the portion of the field that goes along the fence, and now, as you can tell, we're up against another field where there is no fence, there is no boundary. So again, I'm just going to snap a straight line using the fence post on this end and a fence post at the other end. And this way, we'll have a perfectly straight line from end to end of the field that the planter will run on. And here is my first boundary of the field we just mapped. So I will save that and we will move on to double checking this boundary. Since we just finished making our first map of the field and got everything in the display, I figured it's only good practice to take one quick hot lap around the field and double check that everything in the display is exactly how I want it for next planting season. Since I don't anticipate coming back out to this field and doing this with the gator again before planting. So I'm gonna do a quick hot lap around this field before we start jumping around to other fields. That way, when we get back to the computer and offload everything, we know everything is gonna be ready to go for planting. I just got the first field done. It took 45 minutes, ran around, made sure everything was right, and it looked good in the display. Now we're gonna run that back up to the office, upload it to the computer. That way we can make sure we have this field completely done before we start speed going on the rest of the farms. Here's a look at what we just made out there in the field. This purple square is the farm we were just at, and these yellow dotted lines are what we are gonna have as the constant headlands on the east and west side. So now we should have GPS all around the headlands for both passes, as well as going back and forth for the straight tracks. Now that I know everything's gonna work exactly like I had hoped, I downloaded the rest of our fields onto this flash drive. We'll pop this into the display, and we'll keep on mapping, see how many fields we can get done today. This next field I'm gonna work at, you can see as to why I have to manually drive here along the ditch, because the ditch and the grass is not perfectly square. And then we also got big telephone poles on this farm, so this will be nice. That way we'll have GPS when we're going along these at night and when in dusty conditions because it seems like every year we're always changing fields at night or at dawn and dusk when the sun is really low on the horizon and it's hard to see those outside rows in the planter. So it'll be nice, that way we don't have to worry about it around these large telephone poles once we get this field mapped. This field we're mapping right now, that little orange stake way at the bottom level with the soil, that's the property line between us and the neighbor. So what I did, since there's another survey pin here as well as that one over there that we just saw, is I just started and then resumed, which creates a perfectly straight line for our headland between these two pins, and I'll do the same thing right here. Once I hit resume here, it should snap that perfectly straight line right there, just like I wanted. Now, just gotta finish up this end of the field. We got that field done, now it's time to head on to the next one. I was just about to make the last pass on my second to last field I want to get done for the day and here, ka-klong, ka -klong. look what happened. This pole that I had mounted on here must have rattled a little bit loose and the chain I thought I had plenty short that it wouldn't go and get wrapped around the wheel but I just took that turn maybe just a tad too sharp and now I bent the post. Thankfully these posts we got thousands of them, diamond dozen but I'm just gonna eyeball this a little bit going back here on the waterway and hopefully this thing doesn't get caught in here again and I can get it fixed before I gotta do some more mapping up north. Of course I put a lock nut on there. I don't have any wrenches about three miles from home. So we'll see if my little flyer hands and finger grip just loosen that off enough that we can get it off. Come on. Well, I couldn't get the bolt off for that, so we're just gonna take the chain off, and hopefully this post doesn't knock into that wheel before we can make it back home. Thankfully, these posts are literally a dime a dozen, so I'll just grab another one. We'll get that fixed up back in the shop. That way tomorrow, we can keep running, get some more fields mapped. Made it back to the shop. I'm gonna pop off that post, put the new one on, and then offload our boundaries that we did today onto the computer, make sure those are right. 
It's very unusual that I'm able to go out into the fields here in the middle of January and go out and drive the Ranger. Normally we have two, three foot of snowpack, but this winter has been unseasonably warm and dry. So I'm not complaining because it allows me to get this done rather than racing and trying to get this done before spring planting. And since last year was the first year we used RTK, which means we have a higher level of GPS where we can go on the same line year after year after year. That's why I'm going out and mapping all these fields. This isn't something I'm gonna be doing every year to say because everything I'm doing and did today should save as long as John Deere still uses the same constellations and RTK towers in the future. So hopefully this stuff doesn't have to get changed two or three years down the road. Hopefully it's got some time under its belt for this technology. But that's gonna be it for today's video of High Tech Farmer. Thanks so much everybody for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one.